Hello, welcome to Fish and Forage and Outdoor Adventure. In this video today, uh, some of you might recognise I'm uh, I'm on Petheli Beach uh, in North Wales. So I'm uh, the south side of uh, the Flint Peninsula. Uh, it's a really beautiful beach this one. It's like a shingle beach. The waters are crystal clear, so it's beautiful water. Uh, you've got people paddling, kayaking, everything all over the show uh, because it's such nice waters. Um, today uh, I'm fishing for garfish. So, any of you have caught a garfish before, they're absolutely stunning creatures. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like a, a mini sailfish, like a little mini marlin. Uh, really cool, beautiful fish. Uh, some really cool uh, features about them, like they've got these green bones, uh, which I'm hoping to show you later on. Uh, I'm going to do a catch and cook, uh, hopefully, uh, as long as I uh, get to catch one. Uh, a pop up style uh, rig. Um, so you can think of it as kind of supersized rig but scaled down at the same time and that might seem a little bit strange but what I mean by that is it's supersized in the way of instead of using a 4 foot rig body uh, you should be using around about a 10 foot rig body you know, uh, and instead of using for example 12 inch uh, hook lengths uh, in your traces, your snoods uh, you want to put them to about 4, 4.5 foot as long as you can get away with without uh, the two of them tangling. So uh, my rods are about four, uh, this one's 14 foot, that one's 15, so, I, so I'm, gonna be, I'm able to cast the rig around about 12 foot long uh, without the, uh, the swivel at the top uh, damaging the top eye. So uh, I've got a 12 foot rig, roughly. Uh, the smooth at the top is around about uh, five foot, uh, I'd say four foot really. Uh, and the snood at the bottom is around about six foot, well, five-ish. So, so the bottom one's slightly longer because obviously that's going to start off a little bit lower. Um, and they've both uh, got uh, a pop-up bead on. So uh, I've got one of these Lumi beads, uh, Lumi leads. Don't really need those, but um, I didn't want to be casting a big heavy lead and this is one that suited the rating of the rod. Let's tangle here. I'll get there right in a minute. But, uh, See this trace that comes off here, it's coming out, and then I've got one of the little uh, gel uh, inline stops to stop uh, the rig, uh, the, the bead floating off the line, and uh, you can see I've had a, you can see the teeth marks uh, in, in these beads there, that's how you know you get garfish. Those are the, and uh, yeah, a little teeth mark in it. And then I got these little uh, size seven worming hooks. So these are the yucky uh, worming hooks. They're uh, really good for this type of fishing. Nice and light, uh, go perfectly with a pop-up. Uh, and I'm putting little tiny, tiny slithers at uh, mackerel on, around that size and a little fingernail. And what I mean by scaling down your rig is uh, getting the, your, the pound breaking strain your line and go as low as you can get away with. So your rig body's still got to be fairly heavy because you're casting a lead, but uh, your snoods uh, can go down to uh, eight pound, six pound, 10 pound, something like that. I use fluorocarbon, uh, it's invisible underwater. Uh, and your hook sizes, uh, don't want to go past the four. I go uh, as small as a uh, size seven. So always keep your bait nice and fresh. Uh, rancid old baits. I'm going to catch anybody any fish. So, so keep yourself a cool box, ice packs in there, keep your bait as fresh as you can. Uh, and, and these, have, so I've cut off the white of the, the belly of the mackerel. So I'm using mackerel for these garfish. And uh, what you want to do is cut yourself a nice thin strip. Okay, it's a little strip like that. Okay, that's all I used. And then, uh, because don't forget we're using these pop-up baits you want it to float up in the water so what you do, get your scissors and you cut out the flesh ok so it's only the skin you want to be using so that there, now uh, the skin is what uh, holds it on uh, because that's uh, got the toughness in it so it'll still have all that scent and that little bit of um, meat that's in it try and take out as much as you can and then all I can do with this little hook is I'm going to nick it through right at the end there flip it over and back in and that there uh, is 
the perfect little bait for a garfish. See, it's only very small, uh, but any bigger than that, and a garfish won't get it in their mouth anyway. So little size seven hooks, a little pop-up bead, a uh, small piece of uh, thing, and the same on the other hook now. So I make a nice uh, thin strip here. Uh, it's, it's what I like to use. A nice slither of it, rather than just a big uh, rectangle. I like to make it look like a tiny little, uh, tiny little sand eel or something like that. Tiny little white bait. And, um, just take out the worst. Just take out the most of that uh, meat at the middle. There we go. There's both of them done now. Bait, once you've used it, back in your cool box. And get it out. I've had to do a little bit of improvisation here. Uh, forgot my uh, tripod today. So the uh, back of the uh, seat box seems to do the job. I might do this in the future, actually. There's a pop-up bead. There's a little size seven hook. On there is a garfish. Garfish are absolutely delicious sweet. Um, they are a little bit freaky because they've got the green bones inside them. But I promise you, uh, if you try them, you'll take every single one that you ever catch. You can see the green kind of uh, leeching out the side of there. Uh, it's blank there. Um, and all the bones inside are green. Look at the chompers on this guy. Absolutely incredible fish, like a mini marlin, so to speak. Uh, I love catching these. Uh, I am going to be taking a few home. I love eating them. Uh, and this one is going back home. Garfish, target species, absolutely incredible fish, I love these, I don't think there's a cooler fish in the whole of the UK than the garfish. That's such bony mouths, literally it just rows and rows tea so there we go look at that fish number two so that's probably enough for a, a meal there and a couple of garfish four nice fillets in the bag catch and cook missed it and in the time while I've been getting the fishing on the other rod lost the hook on this one okay so it's another pop-up bead and these little hooks I'm using uh, like I said size 7 yucky uh, worming hooks really excellent hooks they are perfect for uh, mini species um, they're using them with a little bit of rag down of uh, breakwater uh, I went to Hollyhead Breakwater last week um, we had 11 species between two of us uh, in a few hours. Dragonettes, uh, blennies, gobies, uh, corkins, gold chinnies, 
uh, balance. Uh, didn't have any sand smelt this time. Uh, not, uh, had a thorn back ray that was on the big rod. But all in all, very productive day. And all uh, and ten out of the eleven species were on these little tiny worming hooks. Okay, so there's your two uh, little pieces of um, a bait that I'm going to hook on. Uh, some people like to uh, put them on the top of your seat box, leave them there for 20 minutes, uh, silver side up and try and let the sun dry it out a little bit. just makes it a bit tougher uh, and stays on the hook a bit longer. Um, I do sometimes, I don't others. Uh, today I'm not, so but uh, it's, it's another possibility for you. Try that, see if it works for you. Yeah, see that island over there in the distance? There's a little um, building on top. That's Bear Grylls house. He owns that whole island. How cool is that? There we go, two garfish, double header, perfect, uh, perfect timing because I uh, was just about to bring the rod in and uh, it just slammed over and then it went completely slack. Pulling them out for fun now. Not quite as big as uh, the last couple, but uh, so he's going to go back. The sea's alive with garfish. Can't get the baits back in the water quick enough. Literally, the bait's in there for, for minutes and uh, the rod slammed over. Double header again. So. Didn't even have a chance to cast the last one back in since I had that double header. Look how, how, how bony the mouths are. It's just like pure bone, full of teeth. So getting these hooks out is a bit of a nightmare, but. I'm sure it's more of a nightmare for him than it is me, but there we go. Those two are nice good sized fish them. And like I said before about the uh, the green leaching out of them. See all these green scales all over my hands. The bones are green, the scales are green, and they get a little bit of a graze on the side, it's green that oozes out of them. Don't know why. It seems to be you get double headers more often than you get singles. I'm going to say that's because they swim around in shoals. So you'll get a shoal of them that will go through and they'll smash your baits and then five minutes later they'll all be gone. So that's why you either get two or not. I've lost a lot of fish actually today from uh, trying to film. So I hope you guys appreciate this because I reckon I've lost about four fish now. You know what men are like, you can't multitask. I can't use a reel and a rod and film at the same time. Right, well I've been at this most of the day now and uh, believe it or not, I'm actually exhausted from catching garfish. I've been in the sun all day and baking hot. We caught about 25, 30. I've not filmed a lot of them because um, both rods go in and all gets a bit hectic. But I've, I've done the best to uh, film as many as I can. I put quite a few back. Uh, I've got maybe uh, eight or nine to take home uh, to eat. Surprised we've had no uh, mackerel uh, mixed in, uh, which is strange, but. Uh, there you go. Take them out and cook them up and feed the family.
There we go, nine lovely garfish ready for the kitchen. Holly's been gutted now, uh, ready just to uh, go home and go straight in the oven if I wanted, straight in the pan, however I choose to cook them. But these are going to be delicious. All the small ones went back, I uh, just kept a few of the big ones. Okay, so there's all the lovely uh, garfish that we're going to uh, prepare now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fillets off. Okay, so this is how I prepare a garfish. So I put the back towards me, and I go in just behind the gills. Turn the knife flat, and I run this all the way along the spine till it comes out right by the tail. And that will give me one fillet. Look at the green bones. Cool, eh? Really crazy bone structure. Um, don't know why, but they're luminous green. Uh, turn them over, turn that round, and then same in the opposite direction. So hold it. Okay, that is my two fillets taken off. And just show my brilliant filleting skills. That is what we've got left. A bright green spine. How cool. Now, what I want to do is I want to take out all these pin bones. The only way to do that, or should I say the easiest way to do that, is to cut them out. So, what I do, is I cut just behind this line, I cut out all this belly section. So all these pin bones go cover the whole of um, the, what do you call it, like the abdomen section of it. So all that there, all the way down to where the vent is, uh, is covered in pin bones. So doing that cuts them all out. Again on here you can see the silver on the inside there. The belly section uh, ends about here and the pin bones mostly go to about here so I go in just behind the pin bones about 45 degree angle minimize the waist down to here and back out through the bottom and I'm confident that that there is taking out 95% of the bones and you can see what's left now there will be a few of the tiny ones along that part and you could cut that out as well if you wanted, uh, but I think that, uh, that's fine as it is. And skin it. So again, nice and gentle, in like that. Keep the blade nice and flat. Just keep on wobbling it backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. And you'll see it just gently prises off. You can even uh, do it in a way where you actually just pull the skin rather than moving the blade. So see that? Perfectly skinned. All that will make great fish bites. Okay, so now's the time I can start to get a bit creative. I don't even know myself how I'm gonna go with this yet. But the basics are quite simple. There you go, I have about five tablespoons of flour in there, coriander leaf, paprika, so I'll give it a bit of spice. Just before I put the fish into the uh, top, better not cut the top, my wife will kill me. I'm just going to put as much of this uh, couple of limes over all this fish. What that'll do, one, it'll give it the flavour, but secondly, 
all the um, juice will help uh, this, this flour stick to the fish. Okay, so mix all this up, get all this. You can put it all in one by one if you wanted. I want to get to bed. Lid. Go, look at that. Perfectly coated fish. Okay, now that's uh, coated, I'm going to And I get the pan warmed up. You can use olive oil, you can use butter, you can use half and half, whatever takes your fancy. Uh, today I'm going to use uh, olive oil. Okay, don't want it too hot, don't want to um, burn the fish. These in. There isn't a skin, so you can't put them skin side down. But just lay them flat. And uh, make sure they've all got plenty of oil on. Um, 90 seconds aside, being all or enough. So we're just going to give these a quick turn over. All this now can come out. Put a line. So here we go, a plate full of garfish fillets and I've got a tubware full of uh, garfish ready to, to cook for uh, the next day or two so let's give this a go mmm absolutely gorgeous mmm mm -hmm. beautiful absolutely beautiful to think that that's any less appealing um, to some people than a mackerel, I don't know why, because that is every bit as good as mackerel. I'd say, even, I would actually say a little bit better. But it's stunning, it really is really, really nice. Definitely got to try this. Golden brown, lovely pieces, the pure, boneless, skinless, everything less fish and it's just pure perfection that is okay thanks for watching my video on fishing forager and outdoor adventure uh, amazing fish to catch uh, beautiful taste and uh, i hope you can try uh, the same yourself thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next video